Howdy folks, this is your first video for unit four on scatter plots and least squares regression lines. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about just some basics about scatter plots, as well as some basics about least squares regression lines. And then in other videos, we'll get into correlation, residuals, things like that. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. As always, the slides are on the left side of your screen and then your notes are on the right side of your screen, okay? So a scatter plot. This is probably something that you have seen before, um, probably since you were in middle school. Um, it's just a bunch of data, right? Uh, but the key thing about scatter plots, different from other plots that we've been looking at, is other plots that we've been looking at have only dealt with one variable and the distribution of one variable at a time. So scatter plots show the relationship between two quantitative variables measured on the same individuals. Okay, so you can't really do a scatter plot um, that you can't pair, like where you can't pair two variables to a certain individual, right? So um, really common ones are like IQ and test scores or um, height and weight of a person, right? Or um, You know, there's lots of different ones, okay? Um, and then another key thing here is that we can only use scatter plots for quantitative variables. These are not used for categorical variables, okay? And we use them for bivariate data, which just means two variables, okay? Where each individual is one data point, okay? All right, by means to variate. Up to this point, we've been dealing with univariate data, meaning we're just tracking one variable at a time, okay? The explanatory variable is on the x-axis, okay? It's, uh, if you remember from your science classes, that's like your independent variable, okay? And then your response variable is on the y-axis, which is like your dependent variable, okay? And what we use scatter plots for is we use them to determine if there is a correlation, i.e. an association or relationship, like a numerical, is there a quantifiable relationship between two variables? Okay. All right, so that's just the basics of scatter plots. Okay. Uh, Oftentimes, a very common thing that AP questions will ask you to do is to describe a scatter plot, right? So um, when you describe a scatter plot, you must describe three things, strength, direction, and form of the pattern or the relationship, okay? So strength um, is how closely the points follow a certain form slash pattern or uh, or a certain uh, line of best fit, okay? Uh, and then we have descriptors for these, right? Which range from very strong to very weak. So very strong, strong, moderately strong, and then moderately weak. weak and very weak. Okay, so those are my descriptors, right? So if you were asked to describe how strong the relationship is, you wanna use one of these descriptors, okay? Direction is exactly what it sounds like. It's just the trend of the graph. So is it going in a positive direction or a negative direction? So direction describes the overall trend of the graph, okay? And we're dealing with either a positive or a negative association. Okay, what direction does is it tells us the type of association or relationship between variables. So your descriptors here are either a positive association or a negative association. OK, 
Okay. And you can almost think about this like the slope of the least squares regression line of the line of best fit or just the the pattern, right? The general trend of the pattern. Is it going up or is it going down? Okay. And then form is the shape of the pattern. Okay. In our case, it's either going to be linear or curved. Okay. And we're going to focus here in this unit, especially on linear relationships. I will show you at the end in the last video in this unit, how to change or convert a curved relationship. So a relationship that looks, for example, like right where if you had scatter plot data that looked something like this right or scatter plot data that curved like this right uh, so I'll show you at the end um, of this unit how we convert um, these curved relationships into linear relationships Okay. And then the very last thing that you may have to talk about are clusters or outliers. Okay. So a cluster is uh, just a group of data points. Okay. Like uh, I'm going to say a densely packed group of data points, right? Um, just meaning you have a lot of data points together in one spot. Okay, and then maybe a bunch of data points together in another spot and a lot of empty space in between. Okay, and then an outlier, I think we all kind of know what an outlier is, but here's your actual definition is that it's a data point outside the overall pattern. Okay, um, we only describe these if they're very obvious in the, um, in the actual scatter plot. Okay, so like I told you, this is a very, very common type of um, a type of question that is asked on free response questions on the AP test, as well as in multiple choice questions. So you're going to hear me a lot in this unit give you scripts to follow, or you'll sometimes hear me call them word formulas. Okay, um, so this is your script for describing a scatter plot. Okay, you would say there is a and then you insert a descriptor for strength. So strength, comma, direction, comma, form. And then you can use either the word relationship or you can use the word association between, and then you write the explanatory and response variables. Okay, explanatory variable and response variable in context. Okay, context is key, right? So if you look at the scatter plot that you see on the left-hand side of your screen, it's also there in your notes. Okay, I would say that strength-wise, I would say this is moderately strong, right? Because it, in general, follows a, a curved pattern, right? Um, like if I had to draw a line of best fit kind of through that, right? Um, but if I wanted to say it was really strong, it would, these points, all of these points would have to be closer, would have to closer follow this, this pattern that I'm seeing, right? So I would say this is moderately strong, negative, right? Because as X increases, Y decreases, right? So moderately strong, negative, and then this is a curved relationship. It looks more like a curved relationship than a linear relationship to me. Okay, so that's strength direction form. So a moderately strong negative curved relationship between the percent of students taking the SAT, right? So that's your explanatory variable and the mean math SAT score. So that's your response variable. Okay. 
All right. So I want you all to give this a try. Okay. So here is a scatter plot. You can see it. Pause the video. I want you to use your script and describe the relationship between the points per game for a team and the number of wins. So pause the video now and give it a try. All right, so you can see my description there on the right side of your screen. So here, I would say that this is a strong relationship, um, especially because it would be pretty easy for me to put a line kind of right through the, the middle of that, right? Um, so that definitely looks like a stronger relationship than the one in the previous example, right? So a strong, this is a positive relationship because as X increases, Y also increases. So strong, positive, and then this is a linear relationship between the points scored per game and the number of wins. Okay. Easy peasy, so it's like that every single time. Every single time you're asked to describe a scatter plot, that's how you do it, okay? So in the next part of this video here, I'm going to talk to you about something that we call the least squares regression line, or you may hear me call it line of best fit, okay, which you probably, or I'm hoping, fingers crossed, you saw in your algebra classes, right? So the line of best fit, what that actually does is it summarizes the relationship between two variables. And really, I should have said two quantitative variables. Okay, All right, because we can see a general pattern, right? But the least squares regression line is going to give us a distinct relationship, uh, a distinct quantitative relationship between those two variables. Okay, so what the least squares regression line does is, um, or the line of best fit, it describes how a response variable again your y variable how that changes as an explanatory variable which is your x variable changes right so if you think back to unit one when we were talking about studies and experiments remember your explanatory variable is what you change as the scientist and the response variable is what you measure. So when I plot those two variables against each other in a scatter plot, what I'm concerned about is what happens to y when I change x. Right? What happens to the response variable when I actively change the explanatory variable? Okay. And one thing that we can use lines of best fit for is to predict the value of y for a given value of x, right? So we have an actual equation. If we don't know what the y value is for a particular x value, for a particular data point, we can get a pretty good idea of what it is if we predict it using the line of best fit. Okay, so in algebra, you guys called these probably lines of best fit. We call them least squares regression lines, okay? Um, and you'll see why in a later video, why we call them least squares regression lines, okay? And then we write them in a slightly different format maybe than you're used to. You are likely used to seeing all equations of lines. Oh, terrible, hold on. My mouse is getting caught on stuff. So you probably have seen all equations of lines written like this, y equals mx plus b, okay? So when you wrote lines of best fit, you probably wrote them like this, y hat equals mx plus b, okay? In statistics, we write it a slightly different way. We write the equation of least squares regression lines with the y-intercept first, so the term with the y-intercept first, and then the term with the slope. Okay, so in stats, we write least squares regression lines using this formula here that I have circled in pink, and I'm going to write it a little bigger for you at the bottom of the screen. So it's y hat okay, equals a plus bx. 
okay? Where y hat is your predicted value. A is your y-intercept. Okay, and B is your slope. Okay, a very important note here is that there is a difference between the Y value, right, which is the actual data point values. So for example, in this scatter plot up here, right, the actual Y value, say for this point right here, this data point, is if I kind of read over, that looks like about 11. So that would be my actual Y value for that data point, right? The predicted value Y hat is what the least squares regression line expects us to get for that particular value of X. So that Y hat value is, I would say, about nine. Okay, so there is a difference between the Y value and the Y hat value. It is essential, okay, essential, 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 that when you write the equation of the least squares regression line, that you write it as Y hat, okay, because if you don't, then what you're saying is, this equation, this line equation that I have here, will give you the actual data point values for every value of x, which is not typically the case, right? What the least squares regression line does is it gives you the predicted value from the least squares regression line, okay? You're going to hear me a lot in this unit talk about something that I call wiggle words, okay, um, which basically is just you giving yourself an out, right, or a way to be wrong, okay, um, because statistics is, it's not an exact science. It's a pretty exact science, but it's not an exact science, meaning unless I have a perfect correlation and a perfect linear relationship between two variables, I can't tell you often what the actual value is, like the actual value of a uh, of a response variable for a particular x variable if I don't have a data point there, like if I haven't collected data for that. But I can give you a good estimate. So you'll hear me talk about wiggle words and giving yourself an out a lot of the times. So the way that you give yourself an out with writing a least squares regression line is using y hat. Okay. Um, another important point uh, is that the least squares regression line always contains the coordinate point x bar, y bar, which is the mean of x. the mean of x, and the mean of y. Okay, It will always contain that data point. Okay, One thing that you can, you, what you can do with a least squares regression line is do something called extrapolation, which is using a line of best fit to predict far outside the given values, okay? Meaning that you would predict a Y value for an X value that's far outside your given data, okay? It's very, very important that you remember here that these predictions are not necessarily accurate. Okay, um, they are not necessarily accurate. Um, and the further away you are the further your x value is from 
the data that you have, the less accurate your extrapolation is going to be. Okay, which you can kind of see in this cartoon, right? Um, so for someone that just got married, right? They had zero husbands yesterday and then one husband the next day. So that means by that he's saying by next month, you'll have over four dozen husbands, right? If you kept going with that trend, but that's far, you're extrapolating way too far outside of your given data set there. Okay. All right. Another very common common thing that is asked of you, especially in free response questions on the AP test, is to interpret the slope and the y-intercept, okay? So this is your script, right, or your word formula for interpreting slope. So you would say whatever the y variable is, so y variable is predicted to increase or decrease depending on the trend right by and then you insert the number for slope by slope uh slope with units in context okay when the x variable increases by one and then insert your x unit, whatever your x unit is. Okay, so for example, using my scatter plot that I have up here, let's say I knew that the slope was 2.5. Okay, so let's say I knew the slope was 2.5. So this is number of wins and points per game. So I would say the number of wins is predicted to increase, right, it's not decreasing, it's increasing by 2.5 wins when the x variable, the number of points per game, increases by one point, okay? So that's a slope interpretation, right? Essentially what you're doing is you're taking the definition of slope and putting it into the context of the problem, okay? There's two words here that are bolded and underlined. Okay, and those words are these words predicted to. Okay, that is your wiggle word. Okay, that is your out when you are interpreting slope. If you forget the wiggle words, then what you're saying is every single time you get one more point per game, you will automatically increase your number of wins by 2.5 wins every single time, which is not necessarily true, right? Um, the least squares regression line is giving you the best estimate of the general pattern, right? So predicted to is your wiggle word there. You could also say um, the y variable will increase by this much on average. That would be another wiggle word that you could use, right? So um, Right. On average is one, or I used about in the next one. So the y variable increases by about this much when the x variable increases by one. Right. So just give yourself a, an out, and a, a wiggle word there. Okay. We You are also often asked to interpret the y-intercept. Okay. So the y-intercept is whatever the y variable is when the x variable is zero. So I would say the, the script here is the y variable is about, that's your wiggle word there, and then you add the actual number, whatever the y-intercept is, with units when the x variable is zero. Okay, so in my number of points example, uh, my points and wins, I would say, so let's estimate this. If I extend my least squares regression line, that looks like, I don't know, it would maybe be at about 0.5 maybe. 
Again, I'm just kind of making this up. I haven't actually run the data. So let's say my y-intercept was 0 0.5. So my interpretation here would be the number of winds is about 0 0.5 when the x variable, the points per game, is 0. Okay. Oftentimes they will ask you, is this interpretation realistic? in context, in the context of this problem. Um, if you think about our points per game example and the number of wins, if I score zero points in that game, it is highly unlikely that I would win anything at all, right? So that interpretation or that variable, the y-intercept, may not actually have a realistic interpretation. Like it, you can interpret it, but it doesn't make sense it's not realistic in the context of the problem, okay? All right, so um, you have this problem here, right? So I want you to give this problem a try. So you have a scatter plot here with the least squares regression line. Um, the x variable is the miles driven. This is for a car, right? Um, and then the price here, uh, is your y variable. So notice that in the least squares regression line, I didn't use y and x, I used the actual variable, like the names of the variable, price and miles. You can replace these with like y hat and x. But if you do, if you do that in a problem, you must define the variables. So you would have to say something like x and say that x is miles driven so that you're giving your variable some context, okay? So I want you to give this a try. So figure out what the slope and the y-intercept is, interpret those values in context, and then use the least squares regression line to predict the price of the car with 100,000 miles on it. Keep in mind that 100,000 miles is like your x value. All right, so give it a try and then check back with me to see how you did. All right, y'all, so here is your slope and y-intercept interpretations as well as your prediction here. Okay, so my slope is the negative 0 0.1629, right? It's always the number that's attached to the x. So my interpretation of this is the car price in dollars, so that's the y variable, is predicted to decrease, because my slope is negative, by 0.1629 dollars when the miles driven increases by one mile. And my y-intercept was 38,257. So that's the price in dollars is about, or approximately, $38,257 when the miles driven is zero, right? To figure out my what my predicted value was, I plugged the x value that was given to me, 100,000, into my equation for the least squares regression line, okay? uh, and subtracted it from the, multiplied, subtracted, and I got 21,967. Now, the cool thing about doing these linear regression problems is most of the actual math that is done, um, you can do on a calculator or on a computer, which means that often they're not going to ask you to calculate a slope or calculate a y-intercept. You will be given all the information that you need, right? either in a computer output or a calculator output, or they'll just give you the equation and then ask you to do things with it, like make predictions or interpret slope and y-intercept or calculate a residual, which is what we're going to talk about uh, in the next video. All right, so that's it for the basics of least squares regression lines. I will see you all in the next video. Bye, everybody.